If a build is unique, it has to be consistent. Cue the factory. With a new power plant for the 53 Chevy, small running big will keep our one-of-a-kind theme intact. When a builder needs the support of a sponsor to get his project off the ground, he needs to know two things. One, when the head of GM Performance Parts calls, you go to the airport and pick him up. Two, you do it in a classic. Come on, JV, we'll show you what we're doing. Well, Dan, I'll tell you, your Impala turned out great. Didn't it? Yeah, well, Thanks beautiful. to you. This is it. This is the Classic Industries Tech Center. Great. Or as some of us call it, the Garage Mahal. <laughs> And this is the project that we're doing. It's a 1953 Chevy pickup. And the really neat thing about this truck is 95 to 98% of this truck has never been on an assembly line. I'm Dr. Jamie Meyer. I'm the product integration manager at GM Performance Parts. And it's like a day of guests today. Man, you got parts everywhere. We got parts and we got and we got first timers. Tony. Morning, guys. Jamie Meyer. Jamie Hi, Tony. 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 Jeff. Uh, my name is Tony Fodi. I work for the Los Angeles Police Department for the last 35 years. Tony's one of the fastest LAPD officers you're ever right. going to meet. <laughs> okay. He's got a, a race program. It's, it's been very successful, and you guys have been helping it out. Yeah. You brought something for us, right? Well, uh, you know, last year we brought a big block crate engine. This year uh, we wanted to start with something a little more basic, so right. GM Performance Parts has complete short blocks available, so we brought you a ZZ 383 short block. Nice. And you can build it up. Your guys can help you and uh, make your own engine. Yeah, so uh, we brought in a ZZ 383 short block. So 383 cubic inches, it's the biggest small block offered by GM Performance Parts. So a small block crate engine is great for a project that has very limited space under the hood. I asked Tony to come on board because uh, he's an extremely qualified engine builder. Uh, he's built a ton of engines, uh, anything from uh, a small four-cylinder that he helped me with years ago all the way up to his 3,000 horsepower race motor. Um, I built a lot of engines, and I know my boys have built engines, but it's always nice to bring on a professional to make sure you're, uh, you're doing it correctly. When they're shipped in a crate, you make, make sure everything's right, nothing's broken, no tabs. Put on an engine stand, turn it upside down, pull the oil pan off of it, put, look at what we call the bottom end. Bottom end is, is the crankshaft, the rods, and everything, and that's what you inspect first to make sure everything's good there. And as expected, everything was perfect. Uh, from there, we got all of our parts opened up and inventoried so we knew exactly what we had and if there were anything else we might be missing. Inspecting fine details doesn't move you forward, but a veteran builder like Tony knows there's a right and a wrong time to find out if something is wrong. Okay, Dan, tell me when. You're coming. You're coming. Slowly, slowly, slowly. We have a hydraulic roller cam. Uh, and what that is is the hydraulic roller cams are real easy on the valve train. Uh, they make a lot of horsepower quickly, they're not really hard to adjust, and they're very user-friendly. In regards to timing, when we put the timing around, we changed uh, the bottom uh, gear off the crankshaft, and we put a double roller Edelbrock, Edelbrock timing chain on it. And we have to line up the motor. When you get the motor lined up, it has to be at top dead center. Marks on the timing gear assure its correct placement. The cover is a quick zip to make way for a balance weight. A little persuasion is always required to make it a good fit. Then the pan goes back so we can start on the top end. Um, then we went to the cylinder heads, put the cylinder heads on, torqued them properly. From there we went and put the valve train together, the rocker arms, the lifters, the push rods. Uh, from there we adjusted the valves while we had the intake manifold off. This is a phase where impact and power tools collect dust. It's all fingers and gentle ratchets until the torque wrench is needed. And we put the manifold on it, the valve covers on it, carburetor. Uh, checked for leaks, filled all the vacuum leaks, then we went to the electronic ignition, and from there we just put plug wires on it and put plugs in the motor, and away we went. Getting spark to the correct cylinder is a simple thing. Fighting off excitement is where you can mess up here. I love it at the end when I'm putting the plug wires on and getting the firing order squared away tells you that the next step is just to put fuel and, and spark to the distributor and the motor's gonna live, and that is what's cool. I had this uh, pipe bender, just made a couple of U-bends, dropped on some mufflers, welded it up. Getting an early peek at how this motor will run is a bonus. It'll be a while before the truck is ready to run the drivetrain. A short startup should rev everyone's enthusiasm. It's always interesting when you, uh, when you first start an engine that, you know, whether it starts or you got the timing right. Well, nerves and curiosity were about to be settled. Some minor adjustments quickly set the idle.
and there it was, a well-deserved clap of hands and a great sounding motor. It sounded real smooth at 2000, which is around the RPM you're going to be breaking in the camshaft and all the valve train. I know there's a debate about the crate with some builders, but as far as I'm concerned, there's no argument.